My video today is based on a 90 second video sent to me by a friend of Donald Trump's recent visit to a black church in Detroit. This video shows our opportunities and upside, but it also highlights our defeatist spirit and low standards. Through this 90 second video, I will show you where our real leaders are. Let's take a look and I will present you with facts and solutions. I think it's interesting that he went to a black church that was full of white folks. Uh, that's not uh, been talked about much, but there was an insignificant number of African Americans there. First off, a lot of our so-called activists need to be deactivated. People online were making a mockery of the number of black people that showed up to this black church versus the overwhelming number of white people that showed up to this black church. Roland Martin on his show said he only counted about 16 people. And we're gonna go with that number, 16. And let's just say, I don't know, that there were over 200 white people there at this black church. In my opinion, if we're gonna have the president coming to visit our community to make it better, we don't need a civil rights leader. We need business leaders to speak up and represent us. And the number of people there, 16 versus 200, reflect what I consider reality. If 16 black people showed up, they represent the true apathy in our communities. If 200 white people showed up to that black church, they represent the true commitment to their communities. And let me tell you, to go to a black church in Detroit, they are not racist. Fox 2 caught up with the leader of 180 Church where Mr. Trump spoke, and his view of what took place is from a very different angle. I was surprised as a black American that there were as many black people here as I thought on the stage we had 50 chairs on each side so you had 100 people sitting there right and then those that were in the crowd a lot of people that were in the crowd it was mixed right but once again the response of the black people that I saw that I was sitting there with on the stage the response I didn't expect that I didn't expect it to be an exciting response which it was if we apply the 80 20 rule of those 16 black people that showed up to that event Three of those people should be and can be the leaders of that particular community. I learned early in life that when you're in an environment that makes you uncomfortable, it normally brings out the best in you. You're motivated, you're eager, and here comes your competitive spirit. You want to do better. You want to listen and learn. You want to learn from the people that are successful in the areas where you might be weak. When we're in a comfortable environment around our own people, we rationalize, we justify, and we procrastinate. And from there, low standards become the norm. Are you a Trump supporter? I'm a supporter of our people. I'm not for Trump. I'm not for Biden. I'm for the single mother right now that's struggling to know how to pay her bills. That's who I'm for. I'm for the least of these. The young brother pastor just succinctly described exactly who he is. He's a man of God. He's looking out for his flock and his community. What did you ask Mr. Trump for? I asked him about the black dollar in the black community. I'm tired. Everywhere I go, I spend my money. I want the black dollar to be in the black community. With the answer to that question alone, Brother Pastor just proved that he is not a businessman. Blacks spend $1.6 trillion a year, and probably 10% of that money is spent in the black community. Trump or no other man has absolutely no control of where we legally spend our money. That's 100% our job to do better as a community. Community and business go hand in hand. You see, back in Memphis, my preacher used to teach us that. You see, if you're going to get married, young man, you got to make sure that you prepare your garden for your wife. Now, in business, that applies tenfold. 
as a community, we have to clean things up and prepare the garden. Otherwise, the other thing applies. You reap what you sow. In our communities, we need to plan, zone, reduce crime. We need to enact laws and policies to raise property values. We need to put more into our young people to make them less threatening and more appealing to the job market. We need to understand that we need to protect the businesses that we have. Thus, we're protecting ourselves. We need to do small things like teach and see the value in what we have. If we do these things and much more to prepare our garden, here comes the American investors. Here comes the redevelopment. Here comes opportunity for small businesses. If you set things up right, the opportunity and money will come. It's one thing about a black community. We have so many vacant buildings just waiting for a dream. Our community needs to no longer just think that one particular party deserves our vote. Do your research, do your studying, and make a decision that benefits you, your family, and your community. This was not the support of a black church. This was a congregation led by an African-American pastor full of white folks and used as a, you know, as a backdrop for black support.